What's up, you guys? I've missed you. Things have been just crazy. I've been super overwhelmed with work. We've been super, super swamped. Anyways, I'm just getting started doing videos again, and I thought today would be kind of fun because I have a car full of stuff. Like, look at all of this. I'm gonna show you guys some of my favorite things that we just got in, and that should be super fun. It's like 80,000 degrees though. Why is it so hot here? You guys actually have never met Jesse before. So Jesse is my studio manager. He takes care of all of the inventory, does all the photography. And I'm just glad I was able to get here before he went home for the day because now I have help to unload all of the stuff. shocked that none of you guys have met Jesse yet. Say hi, Jesse. He's only been here a year and I feel like I work for him, which is I think maybe a good and a bad thing. But you guys, I'm gonna show you all of this insane stuff that we just got in. I'm super excited about all of it. Jesse is not because he just had to haul it in here. Um, but that's beside the point. No, so we got this really cool horse in and I'm gonna show it to you guys because it's kind of amazing. All of this is mother of pearl inlaid. We're gonna do a little bit of digging and I am gonna see if Jesse can figure it out <laughs> because I totally know what it is. So I'm just testing him. Really? Mm hmm Yep. <laughs> and he just told me that he's planning on leaving right now at the end of the day. You had one job today and that was to figure that out and it didn't happen. So I feel like, you know, I'm gonna start the write-up paperwork. So I have some things you shouldn't get. One of them being those uh, airplane propellers. You guys, look at this situation is unacceptable. And these things like are the slowest sellers in the world. I just cannot not buy airplane propellers. How many of these do we still have in stock, Jesse? Because like nobody buys them. Um, like five. Seven. <laughs> we have yeah. seven. We already have seven of these and I just brought five more. <laughs> So you guys may remember I did a video a while back on table lamps and lighting and it was a super fun video to make but I do have to say I did tell you guys about these lamps by Pal Henningsen and it's funny because most of his lamps are super contemporary, very modern, very clean, but when the studio was just starting they were developing these lamps that have like a very old school traditional style. The really funny thing about these lamps is they made the shades out of lead. Lead is a really, really soft metal. So like this just bends and folds. Like it, you barely touch it and you can feel it like caving in on itself, which is really kind of a nightmare to have to ship. <laughs> you wanna know the funniest story, you guys? Do you see this box right here? It's massive. So this box probably goes up to my hip. It's one of these. So Jesse spent an hour packing one of these, just like this. And the customer emailed me to cancel after he had done all of this packing. So we're just gonna leave it in the box till somebody else buys that one. But then we got another one for you to pack when it's- Thank you so much. <laughs> Leaving me here with this giant mess that I've got to clean. Yeah, uh, keep it clean. Yeah, I'll try. <laughs> Bye, have a good one. If you guys have ever been to like a pool hall or somewhere where they play pool, they have to have like a big light above the pool table, right? These lights are normally massive and they can be made out of glass. They can be really heavy and really difficult to ship. So I found one that I was really excited to find because it's like half the size of a normal one. Bum, bum, bum. You guys, I love Olympia beer advertising and this thing is really, really lightweight. Uh, it totally still works, which is great. And it's gonna be super easy to ship because a normal pool table light like this would be anywhere from like twice as big to three times as big and twice as heavy to three times as heavy. So I was definitely really excited to find that. All of these wooden things here are super cool. And I'm gonna tell you guys what those are. This guy has this huge lot of 
very cool Pacific Island antiques. Not only was it something that was used, by these tribes, but they are all handmade. Each one is gonna be completely unique and different, which, you know, I'm a huge fan of. So I'm gonna show you guys some of these super cool old war clubs from some of these Pacific Islands. So this is the first one I'm gonna show you guys. So the end has all of this like craziness on it. All of these details, it's very crudely made as you can see. And then the other end has this on it, and I love that it still has this fabric attached to it. It's very heavy, very dense wood. This could seriously do some damage. The next one I'm gonna show you guys is this. The handle has all of this like crazy detailing on it. This again is a massive size, and I love that this end is painted. How cool is this? Another thing that you wanna look for are age cracks in the wood. So this is going to add to the authenticity of something like this, and that is just kind of a good thing when you can find it, because obviously the newer pieces are not gonna have age cracks. The next one I'm gonna show you guys, this one I know is from Fiji. Um, very cool. Some people call this a gunstock club because it's shaped like a gunstock. Some of the old Native American war clubs were actually made out of old gunstocks because they would take them and repurpose old gunstocks into these like crazy cool war clubs. This one is also really cool. This one I believe is Samoan. It's got really cool detailing and then it's got this like sawtooth edge which is great. Uh, not as big as the other ones but still very cool and equally as detailed, which I like. You guys do just have to be a little bit careful when you're buying stuff like that. The majority of the ones you're gonna find are reproductions and you don't wanna end up getting something like that. You wanna make sure if you're getting it, it's gonna be authentic, it's old, and that's can be hard to find. So you guys know I love old advertising, so I'm gonna show you guys, I got some super cool old advertising and uh, some of it I'm going to put on the site and some of it I'm going to send as a gift because I think it's gonna make a great gift. So let me show you guys what I got. It's a vintage Pepsi barrel. So this thing is really cool and it's really hard to find these when they're not just completely destroyed or rusted out. This is what the lid looks like. <laughs> totally rusted out. And this is actually not in terrible shape. Like somebody could probably clean this up pretty well and you can still see it has the logo there on the bottom. And then the other one that I wanna show you is an old Coca-Cola cooler, but it's in like the really, really old version. So it's just, it's it's more rare. Oh my gosh, these are so heavy. Like people used to carry these to the park. Love this, right? Like, look at this, super, super old. So this side has like this crazy latch and then you can just open it up. And then the inside has like dead bugs and stuff, which is always good. Um, and then this just hooks in here to hold that, that shut. And then you can just lock this guy back up over here. And you can either carry it with these side handles, both sides have a handle, or you can lift it with this thing here. But what I also love about this is it has a bottle opener. You guys, this is just such a good piece of American history. My grandma is obsessed with Coca-Cola stuff. Anytime I can find something that's really rare or unique that's Coca-Cola, I mean, you should see, she's just got everything Coca-Cola you could ever imagine. Her birthday's coming up in September, so I'm packing that up and I'm sending it to her and I think she's gonna really like it. One of the other things I wanted to show you guys is a beaded uh, sword case look at this so this thing is all hand beaded now i've actually shown you guys some things from this tribe before they make insane stools they make really cool beaded panels so look how big this case is and then look at the sword like, like this goes in here this giant thing i mean the sword probably goes to like right here it's kind of funny. Like I couldn't imagine somebody going to war with this. Like, okay, I mean, maybe this was to intimidate your enemies. Like, hey, I've got a really big sword. Do not mess with me. And then hopefully they would be too scared before you actually <laughs> had to like 
fight them off with this butter knife. But um, I think it's probably more decorative. They do a lot of like really beautiful beaded panels. Actually, I'll show you guys one now. Here's one that we have on the site now. This is from the same tribe. And you can actually see they do a lot of like the same things with the face. They do a lot of uh, like figural stuff. They've got like animals, snakes, all kinds of really cool stuff. Their beadwork is insane. Each piece is one of a kind. Okay, you guys, I've got to start going through all of this stuff and pricing it, getting it on these shelves so that Jesse can start photographing it tomorrow. And um, thank you guys for checking out some of this stuff. I was super excited to show it to you. Thank you guys for hanging out with me while I'm going through all of this stuff. This is probably one of my favorite things about my job is just going through everything that I've got and just being like, ah, oh, this is so cool. I'm so happy that we found this and being able to offer it on our site. It's also really exciting. So I'm going to go ahead and start getting this going. Thank you guys for watching. If you haven't hit that subscribe button yet, make sure you do it now so you don't miss future episodes. And as always, thank you guys for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day.